520 million years ago, something enormous lurked in Cambrian waters. Not a radiodont, not a worm, but a 1.5 meter predator built almost entirely around its mouth. Omnidens amplus, meaning large all tooth, is known from fossilized mouth parts, so distinctive that scientists once thought they belonged to several smaller animals. Over time, their true connection became clear, revealing a single colossal predator. The confusion began with a few fragments, mysterious ring-shaped fossils pulled from the Cambrian rocks of Yunnan province in the early 1990s. These came from the Chengjiang biota, a deposit famous for revealing delicate tissues of ancient animals. But unlike the soft-bodied creatures usually found there, these specimens were made of rigid interlocking plates arranged in circles just a few centimeters wide. Without a body attached, they appeared to belong to something small perhaps a bend-thick scavenger rather than a powerful swimmer. At first, paleontologists grouped the rings with the mouth parts of preapulid worms. The resemblance to the scalid rings these worms use to drag food into their throats seemed too close to ignore. Some even compared them to the mouth cones of modern kinohinks, tiny burrowing invertebrates that feed using retractable spines. Yet the Cambrian fossils were thicker and more sturdily built. Their plates overlapped like armor rather than delicate teeth, suggesting surprising strength. A few researchers began to suspect that the mysterious creature might be exceptionally large for a worm, possibly over a meter or about 3.3 feet, a scale unheard of for any known preapolid. That line of thinking persisted until a separate idea took hold. Several scientists noticed that the structures shared similarities with Anomalocaris, the best known radiodont predator of the Cambrian, its circular pineapple slice mouth combined with those Chengjiang plates, seemed to confirm that some radiodonts had grown into giant marine hunters, reaching lengths of up to two meters or about 6.6 .6 feet. For several years, that became the prevailing view. These fossil rings, they thought, were the mouths of supersized. Anomalocaris. But the geometry of the Chengjiang specimens eventually cast doubt on that assumption. Their plates were broader, fewer in number, and lacked the symmetry typical of radiodont mouths. The pieces refused to fit the existing model, leaving scientists with an unsolved puzzle. By 2006, researchers took a different step. When the type species Omnidens amplus was formally described, it was reinterpreted as a gigantic preapolid worm, with an estimated body length of at least one meter. This seemed plausible at first. The spiny ring bore a clear resemblance to worm mouth parts and no other clear candidate existed. But the classification rested entirely on the oral structures without any trace of a segmented body or cuticle to confirm it. That ambiguity kept Omnidens in an uneasy position, halfway between the worlds of worms and early arthropods. The stalemate broke when new material emerged from the Shaoshiba Lagerstätte, a slightly younger Cambrian deposit also in Yunnan. These specimens preserved the same circular plates as in Chengjiang, but in association with each other, revealing how the parts connected into a single massive oral assembly. The arrangement showed traits unmistakably panathropodan signs of a lobopodian lineage related to the ancestors of arthropods rather than worms. Some of the individual plates measured several centimeters across. When scaled to a complete animal, the full organism must have reached an estimated length of 1.5 meters or nearly five feet, making it the largest free living creature known from that era. The recognition of Omnidens as a panarthropod ended the confusion that had persisted for over a decade. It explained why the plates looked too rigid for a worm and too asymmetrical for a radiodon. What had first seemed a collection of scattered mouthpieces turned out to belong to one formidable predator. This discovery forced paleontologists to reconsider early Cambrian ecosystems. If a lobopodian grade creature could grow this large, the structure of the food chain must have been far more complex than once thought. The contrast with Anomalocaris made those conclusions even clearer. While both were impressive predators, Anomalocaris relied on speed and flexible appendages to seize prey. Omnidens, by comparison, was a study in mechanical power. Its circular mouth ring armed with rigid spines suited to gripping and perhaps crushing rather than suction feeding. 
Two different strategies, both adapted for domination, coexisted in the same seas. As the Shaoxiba findings confirm the true nature of Omnidens, attention turned to the structure that defined it more than any other, the mouth itself. Nearly every clue to its life, habits, and evolutionary position comes from that single intricate feature. Understanding how it worked would reveal what kind of predator could build its entire identity around a ring of teeth. Few Cambrian animals fit their names quite as well as Omnidens Amplus, truly the monster of all teeth. Its anatomy centers on one intricate feature, a bilateral pair of mirror image crescents built from rigid plates and dense ranks of spines. Each crescent carried at least six principal plates, broad at the base and tapering into sharp inward facing spikes. Between them sat smaller accessories and inner plates arranged in ordered tiers. These inner rows bore three to five elongated spines each, becoming thinner and more numerous toward the throat, forming a layered column of hooks inside a muscular tube capable of expansion and retraction. The entire assembly functioned as a short, flexible pharynx, able to draw in and process food with mechanical precision. This complex feeding unit bore a striking resemblance to the oral structure of the smaller guild Lobopodian Pamdelurian, a similarity that strengthens the view that Omnidens shared close evolutionary ties with that genus, perhaps even representing, uh, I haven't seen it representing a gigantic form within the same lineage. Like Pamdelurian, the architecture of its mouth points to a Lobopodian blueprint modified for scale and strength, linking its origin firmly within the early euarthropod stem group. But while other Lobopodians had tiny circular mouths measuring only a few millimeters across, the oral plates of Omnidens were several centimeters wide. When reconstructed, the apparatus could exceed 20 centimeters in diameter, large enough to consume small arthropods whole. The thickened cuticle and robust construction suggest a diet of hard-shelled prey, an upgrade in predatory power unmatched among Cambrian Lobopodians. Earlier researchers viewed the mouth as radially symmetrical, much like the circular maw of Anomalocaris. New fossils, however, exposed irregularities that broke that symmetry. In 2024, detailed structural analysis confirmed the bilateral organization, two opposed arcs differing subtly in their plate arrangement. That bilateral plan implied the mouth had a definite front and back, an orientation allowing directed feeding motion rather than simple suction. This pattern mirrored the emerging body architecture seen later in arthropods, marking an early step toward coordinated side-to-side -side control during feeding. Just beyond the oral opening lay Omnidens' most unusual features, a pair of talon-like grasping structures, or TLS, poised like prehensile claws. Each consisted of two connected halves bearing eight to 10 transversely flattened spines that curved gently toward the center. Their bases were lined with a medial ridge and reinforced by ribbon-like fibers that gave both rigidity and flexibility. Interestingly, these formidable appendages were once mistaken for the raptorial endites of the Radiodon Amplectobalua, another case where convergent predatory shapes misled classification. Further study revealed their true position and orientation. The talons consistently pointed toward the mouth apparatus, confirming they form part of a single integrated feeding system designed for capture and restraint. Unlike the nathabases of radiodonts or the toothed cones of worms, the TLS acted as functional claws capable of flexing to seize struggling prey and draw it inward. Their motion worked in concert with the retractable pharynx, creating a unified mechanism that could grasp, compress and ingest in coordinated sequence. Such control suggests an animal that feeds by precision handling rather than passive suction, closing around prey, holding it steady, then pulling it into the dense forest of inner spines. This combination of grasping appendages and bilateral mouth parts reveals an evolutionary experiment in coordinated predation, exploiting control and force together in a way far ahead of its contemporaries. Viewed in this light, Omnidens emerges not as an evolutionary oddity, but as an early engineer of complex feeding behavior. Its bilateral apparatus, paired talons, and muscular pharynx 
all speak to a lineage exploring new modes of control at the dawn of arthropod evolution. The resemblance to Pamdelurian and other lobopodians situates it firmly within the stem arthropods, yet its scale and sophistication hint at the forms soon to follow. What stands out is the evolutionary direction these traits imply. A mouth and frontal region built for coordination, bilateral control and prehensile precision hallmarks of later arthropod anatomy. Such innovations suggest that Omnidens occupied a pivotal position between simpler lobopodian feeders and the radiodont predators that later defined the Cambrian seas. It is here on that boundary between forms where the next stage of the story begins. How does a creature that looks like neither a worm nor an arthropod connect them both? That question defines the mystery of Omnidens amplus, a species that sits squarely within the stem group Euarthropods, a branch that links worm-like lobopodians to the more complex joint-limbed arthropods that later conquered the oceans. Its anatomy reflects that transitional identity, where lobopodians like Pamdelurian and Gianshanopodia possessed soft, non-segmented limbs and flexible bodies. Omnidens reveals the next step. Its mouth and frontal region are rigid, built from sclerotized elements arranged with striking bilateral precision. Even in fossil form, you can trace the lineated cuticular bars and raised ridges that strengthened the frontal surface, evidence of a body already experimenting with mechanical reinforcement before the arrival of defined jointed limbs. These lineations and bars belong to the Lobopodian heritage continuous sheets of cuticle not yet divided into articulated podomeres. The frontal appendages of Omnidens were non-segmented but carried sturdy, talon-like extensions capable of independent motion. They show continuity with the spiny feeding arms of Kerygmachala and Opabinia, yet they're heavier, flatter and built for forceful grasping rather than delicate probing. This distinction marks an evolutionary turning point. The animal expresses the basic lobopodian framework, soft segments and unjointed legs, but overlaid with radiodont-like adaptations in its head region. Its feeding system combines the muscular lobopodian pharynx with rigid capture tools reminiscent of radiodont raptorial arms, blending two evolutionary modes into one predator. These transitional traits blurred classification for decades. Even after its re-identification from isolated mouth rings into a complete feeding complex, researchers struggled to decide which lineage Omnidens truly belonged to. Some saw a giant worm, others proposed a bizarre arthropod ancestor. The difficulty lay in the mosaic nature of its anatomy. It possessed non-podomeric appendages, yet those spines worked in the same functional pattern later refined into articulated radiodont limbs. Developmentally, this indicates that limb structure was already modular before real joints evolved. The basic framework for segmentation existed in concept sections of tissue specialized to grasp, move and manipulate prey, even if no hard separated segments had yet formed. From a developmental view, modularity is essential. Omnidens displays a complete system where mouthparts, talons and the surrounding cuticle interact as integrated units. The arrangement anticipates the way later arthropods organize their appendages, but in Omnidens, those modules remain fused, forming a continuous surface built for concentrated strength. Each talon acts like an early experiment in limb differentiation, the kind of structural trial that led to podomere formation later in evolution. Rather than a single structure repeating endlessly down the body, the head region specialized into discrete mechanical modules, graspers, mouth rings, and perhaps primitive cetal blades that assisted in channeling water or prey fragments toward the mouth. Placed between a worm and a radiodont, Omnidens bridges both anatomically and functionally. Its body plan ties together lobopodian simplicity with the emerging specialization that defines the stem group of euarthropods. In scale, it reached farther than either relative, but physiologically, it carried their legacy forward by demonstrating that segmentation began as a behavioral advantage control during feeding long before it became a structural one. For understanding how arthropod limbs and mouth parts originated, Omnidens provides direct evidence of pre-podomeric evolution, qualities of coordination and modular design arriving before hard jointed form. And as more detailed fossils from the Shaoshiba Lagerstätte show, this animal may not have been alone in its lineage, 
there are signs that more than one kind of Omnidens hunted in those same ancient seas. What if there were more than one species of this all-tooth predator? For years, every fossil with those massive jaw rings was linked to Omnidens amplus, but new material from the Shaoshiba Lagerstätte hints at another chapter. The site, dating to roughly 518 million years ago, has revealed a second and distinct form, Omnidens kyongki, a species whose anatomy diverges enough to suggest not just variation, but specialization within the genus. Its discovery at Shaoshiba introduced a new question. Was the genus Omnidens a single evolutionary experiment or a whole lineage of tooth-centric giants adapted to different ecological roles? The structure of O Kyong Chi immediately set it apart. Instead of a smooth ring with evenly spaced plates like O and Plus, it carried six dominant principal plates surrounded by unequal rows of accessory spines. Each plate bore cutting ridges along its inner margin, while the outer edges flared outward into reinforced brackets of sclerotized material. These mechanical differences give the weaponized mouth a rough symmetry, but not the radial kind seen in older radiodont jaws. The entire mouth aperture was slightly oval, hinting at directed feeding behaviors and a more focused range of motion. Surrounding the main opening were paired talon-like grasping structures, rigid extensions resembling curved claws, each one more than a centimeter long. Their surfaces were lined with blade-shaped spines that projected forward, suggesting a raptorial mechanism suited to clamping and tearing. That configuration changed how scientists thought about variation within early panarthropods. Instead of a single blueprint repeated endlessly, Omnidens demonstrated adaptability through expansion, thickening, or reconfiguration of the same skeletal units. The differences between O Amplus and O Kyong Chi imply ecological divergence. One, a deep water hunter relying on engulfing force. The other, a more active grasping predator. Such variation inside one genus was rare for the Cambrian and revealed that these hunters explored multiple approaches to feeding long before the rise of true arthropods. It also showed that lobopodian grade predators could evolve structural complexity rivaling the later radiodonts, even without segmented limbs. Seen alongside radiodonts like Anomalocaris, Omnidens adds another layer to the Cambrian predator network. The radiodonts were agile swimmers built for speed. Their lightweight frontal appendages work best against soft-bodied prey such as small worms or gelatinous animals. Biomechanical analyses of Anomalocaris fossils show that its delicate spines would likely have bent or snapped against armored targets. Omnidens, by contrast, combine toughness with control. The rigid talons, reinforced oral plates, and bilateral pharynx formed a grasping system capable of overpowering prey that fought back or wore shells. Its jaws could open wide, clamp shut, and sustain force without structural failure a design for endurance more than agility. In this light, Omnidens may have been the true apex predator of the mid-Cambrian seafloor. With a body exceeding a meter in length and an eating mechanism built for power, it stood near the top of the early marine food web. Its niche likely lay in deeper oxygen-rich waters, areas only recently made habitable by rising oxygen levels across Earth's oceans. Those environmental shifts were crucial. Without them, large-bodied carnivores like Omnidens could not have maintained the energy demands of active predation. The Shaoshiba discoveries therefore do more than expand a genus. They reveal how environmental and biological innovations converge to produce the first large, complex predators in Earth's history. And as researchers continue to explore that site, each new fossil seems to move Omnidens further from an isolated oddity toward a key figure in the unfolding story of early animal complexity. The Omnidens Amplus fossil reveals a crucial period in early life. Its mosaic body plan, lobopodian frame with a bilateral talon equipped mouth, demonstrates that complexity and large scale predation emerged before fully segmented arthropods. As a giant of the Cambrian, its wide distribution, Chengjiang and Xiaoshiba, preserves early evidence of this evolutionary step. 